Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. My, my microphone's falling. <laughs> Jim, learn. You got to know how to use a boom at this point. You would think that. You'd think a lot of things. <laughs> yes, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 169. Hopefully that is not a distorted, jarbled mess. But yes, we are here. Thank you for joining us once again. Mm. Bri, we have a theme for the beer tonight. The theme of tonight's beer is Brian helps me finish off my cooler for my block party. I had a feeling there was something odd about this choice. So for those of you who have watched or listened, generally Jim and I will take turns. Like you get a four pack, six pack, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, it's always interesting. Jim comes today and says, we can start with this, a single bottle of beer and split it. A 12 ounce, not even like we've split big bottles before. I brought more. And he goes, this is the fancier stuff. <laughs> and by fancy, he means the Kona Brewings Hanalei Island IPA. That was the fanciest thing in the cooler. Now, for Jim to use the term fancy for this, knowing what we've drank, I'm worried about what's in this cooler. I mean, I'm going to make some bold guesses here. I'm going to say for sure there's some Coors Light. To be determined. I'm going to say there's probably Keystone. Incorrect. I only brought five beers. so Okay. So then it's mostly going to be Coors Light and probably like maybe someone got fancy and was like, ooh, a Sam Adams summer pack. Close. Ooh, okay. So yeah, we are starting off with this. Uh, did you, now, did you have this? No, I did not. Okay. <clears throat> so Actually, that whole day was a lot of a blur, So, but I don't think I had it. So Kona always makes pretty solid beers. Uh, their most famous was the Big Blonde. It's, cr oh, it's not called Crush. We, we did a lot of Kona in the early days. Yeah, I feel like it's called the Big Wave. It's the blue. Label. The Big Wave, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's their Blondale. This one is actually, I just took a sip while Jim was talking. Brewed with passion fruit, orange, guava, and natural flavor. 4.5%. Which I got to say for an IPA. That's a really low percentage point. I don't think I can think of a lot of IPAs that are that low. Wow, that's a lot of citrus. There's a lot of citrus. Almost no bitterness because it's also only 4.5%. But it's like that. It's not beer bitterness. It's all like citrus bitter. Yeah. It's interesting. It is know. interesting. I like that this is our fancy beer, though. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Ah, uh, so Jambers, so that's what we're starting with. You know what? Might as well pull out the next one. What's the next one going to be? Oh, it's just going to be a flat tire. Or okay. A flat tire. All right. That's pretty interesting. And then course. And then cool. God damn it, Jim. Right. I could have brought the one PBR that was left in there, too, to spice things up. You know, I actually haven't had a PBR in so long. I don't even kind of remember it. Other than that weird phase of, why did that ever become the hipster beer? Cheap. It's just it's just always cheap, I guess. But I feel like there's so many other cheap beers that are better. I much prefer like the Kensingers and the Narragansetts to PBR. Yeah, that's why. But like, yeah, it got like that was the thing that like was the hipster beer. Yeah, even outside of that, uh, that was a hipster beer because it was like, oh, this is a shitty beer. I'm gonna drink it ironically. It was and ironic, yeah. Everyone started to like, you know, they drank it so much that it became their shit beer of choice. So it's like that and mustaches. They're never good. No, they're not. No, but uh. This one's okay. If you're not a, I'll tell you what, if you're not a big IPA fan, could be an interesting choice to get if you If you in really there. like grapefruit, I get, I get strong grapefruit vibes off of it. Yeah. No, the grapefruit is the dominant flavor. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not, it's not a go to, but it was there. So, Jamber, speaking of this weekend, uh, how'd you feel after the block party? <laughs> So I'm uh, I'm 36 years old now, Brian. So once you hit 35, <laughs> things start to fall apart for the dumbest reasons. So I'm helping set up for this fucking block party. And, you know, I set up some, some tables and some tents and shit like that. And going fine. And I go to pet my dog and I pull my back. <laughs> and I spend the rest of the time walking around like Mr. Goddamn Burns. Dude. I've been doing it for three days now. I, I mean, I, I, wish, I wish I had enough room right here to have Jim demonstrate. I mean, back arched. Like literally, just he's already got a walk that's unique to him. I'll put that's a nice way of. I'm already it fighting an uphill battle. <laughs> I'm one of those uh, bow feeded people who do, not bow legged, but like my feet go out like a penguin. Yeah, I was gonna say you walk like the penguin. And we're not talking Colin Farrell walk. 
We're talking. Man. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, I'm very aware of which penguin. <laughs> but not, you know, not Burgess Meredith either. By the way, your sister-in-law pointed out something very, very interesting. What did my lovely sister-in-law point out, Brian? <laughs> That you also tend to not only walk like that, but you kind of keep your hands behind you. Someone else fucking said that. I do not normally do that. That was because I was in pain. It was involuntary. Hey, I, I haven't noticed it, but now I'm going to keep an eye out for She's it. She's not the only one to bring that up during the party either. So, yeah, Jim was was uh, hurting. I mean, how was playing drums with your back? Hurt. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, my band had a, like, a little set lined up for it, and... Like the set itself went okay, as good as it can, in like playing in the driveway. But yeah, as I was playing, I was like, "Oh, this sucks." Yeah. Like carrying my equipment up the stairs, I was like, "Oh, this sucks." Setting up, <laughs> "Oh, this sucks." Taking down. Luckily, like I had a small window where I was like drunk enough and motivated enough that I could get my shit back inside. But oh yeah. <laughs> so Fun. Jim, Don't get old, kids. So Jim, other than blowing out your back have you been able to join any games actually you seem to be on a little hot streak this past week yeah i actually had some random time to play so i finished off uh what the fuck did i finish off i mean the big one that i did was marvel ultimate alliance 3 that's which what... had you been playing that for a while no i just randomly had some like time where i could just sit down and just like bang out a game i wanted to bang out so, so... how long was it i think it was about 10 hours damn all right so you put in some work yeah no i mean i banged it out in a couple days i you know what it was like, that was, like, the perfect game for, like, just my mindset at the time. Like, nice, brainless beat-em-up, basically. And you would think, like, the re I don't know what it is with those games. Because, I mean, you either like them or you don't like them because yeah. they're extremely repetitive. I mean, it's all repetition. Yeah. Go to area, fight a bunch of shit. Go to area, fight a boss. Go to area, Get fight a, a bunch yeah. of shit. But, I don't know, it just hit that right spot of fun for me. Now, the last Marvel Ultimate Alliance I played was... Two. Two. And and the thing I liked about that game was they included the fusion power. So, like, Iron Man would shoot towards Cap, who would hold up the shield and would hit all the enemies. Oh, yeah. You you can combine a lot of powers and stuff like too. that. Yeah. Okay. Because that was one thing. <clears throat> and and Mark. And, and two, could you command people to do that? Because you could do that in this one. What do you mean, command? Like, if you, like, if you did, like, our bumper and a button, you would do a power. but if, And you have a chance of accidentally doing it with another player if they're doing it at the same time. Or you could hold in like our our trigger and do it, and it would if someone's around you with like a comparable power, it would like automatically like go at the same time kind of deal. I th think that sounds familiar. Okay, I, I know it couldn't do it in the first one, right? Um, but this game that that was the one that's only available on Switch, right? Yep. So I definitely want to play it. Um, is the roster pretty decent size? It's a big ass roster. Is it? I think it's like fifty some characters. Holy shit! Yeah. So then. I know you. I know how you play games. You find the thing you like, and you don't deviate. Oh, I use the same people the entire time. I was going to say, who did you use? Uh, well, who was I using? I was using Captain America, Hulk, Star-Lord, and uh, Iron Man. Hmm. Okay. You didn't want to deviate at all, huh? Hey, I was already <laughs> leveling them up and getting good with them, so... I think I had a nice balance of, like, shooter guys and melee guys and all kinds of stuff, yeah. so... Okay. Yeah, you played that, and then uh, what was your other game you played? What the fuck was the other one that I beat? I just I wrote remember. the name of it. <clears throat> Hold on, I'll look it up fast. Um, oh, thought... wait, it was right there. Oh, yeah, Death Smiles 2. I don't even know what Death Smiles 1 is. So, Death Smiles, uh, it's a cave shoot 'em up It's a bullet hell. Uh, it's like a little, you play little witches and shit like okay. that, and you have your little option who's around you who helps you out with powers. I played the first, the first one was on, like, a random game I picked up like 10 years ago into 360. Yeah. Because it was like a $30 collector set with like a face plate and like a soundtrack and shit like that. And like I played it. It's, a, it's an arcade port. So it's a short game. So yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. No. So Death Smiles 2 is kind of more of the same. It wasn't as good as 1 because I wound up picking up like the 1 and 2 collection because I never played 2 before. Yeah. So I played through 2 and I was like, it's still all right. It's pretty good. Like I guess like when you play the, it has a couple different modes. It has the original arcade mode. And then has like an arranged mode, and then has like a sp optimized story mode. Basically, where like they voice acted the the cutscenes and made them widescreen, and they made the whole gameplay widescreen instead of four or three. Okay. And they added like some extra powers you could use throughout. And I think it also had tiers because I did the story version first, and I beat that. I one CC'd it. I was like, this is extremely easy. Yeah, it was. So like I must easy. have just accidentally put it on like the easy mode, not knowing. Could Pardon me, because it said type one, two, and three. So I just like, all right, whatever type one is. So that must have been easy. Hmm. But then I played on arcade mode, and I was like, oh, okay, this is like 
where it's a it. challenge. Okay. So it only took me like five credits to get through. So I think Oops. I could probably practice it, but I don't really want to. <laughs> but no, it's still it's still fun, but yeah, just don't go in expecting an amazing game. But it's fine. Jim, you mean you haven't been just uh, putting all your time in Elden? <laughs> I'll get to that whenever. <laughs> I got other games to beat first. <laughs> Nice. Are you playing anything else now? Um, except for if I have like ten minutes myself, I'll pop in Fall Guys here and there. Fall Guys, yep. Fall Guys is quickly becoming the new. I have fifteen minutes to just dick around just with. Just dick around. Yep. Yeah. So as of last week, Fall Guys was the for the last game I streamed. Which thank you to Blade, Todd, Lucas, you goddamn animal. <laughs> um, it was it it is a it is a really fun game. <clears throat> I can't decide if I like how random and kind of to a degree a luck based i would almost call it is mm -hmm. like that is a really fun element but that's also like oh it sucks because like you know where you're placed where this happens where that happens there's a million factors um but really fun game for the couple of hours i played it uh i just beat moonin i gotta see if you eat crow on that i'm gonna have to look back through some old episodes because i think i remember talking about that early in the pandemic and you're like why do you want to play this cutesy bullshit what fall guys yeah i don't like all the ex the it's it's another game it's like call of duty and all of them where it, i think the qt aspects are silly um the ability to dick over and grab people as they try to jump is pretty hilarious um some of those levels are extremely frustrating and some are definitely easier than others yeah. yeah some of them are super easy and like i said others it's so rare like the one level where you're on the teeter-totter and it's uh the catapults are shooting at you oh uh, yeah it's completely random like it could just happen to have some that no matter what you do you're about to get hit right um so like i said it's it's interesting uh but yeah no i beat moon in today um I don't. I, once again, I don't know how to describe it. It's a puzzle game, but you can adjust and rotate sections of the level to complete the puzzle. You know me; I'm not a real big puzzle guy, but I was also at the point where I was like, "I'm just sticking it out, and I need to finish it." So I'm glad I did. It looked good. A soundtrack is awesome. Probably not playing it again, but it was fun for what it was. Um, just started an interesting one. A little game called Resident Evil Gaiden. Oh, what are you emulating that? I'm assuming. No, I mean, Jim, I wanted to put out 300 bucks for a... Probably, it's only 150 for the card. <laughs> 300 uh, complete, minimum. Um, yeah, I, you know what? It's it's on my list of, like, I have to beat this year. Right. And I knew nothing. When I say I knew nothing about that game, I didn't realize the interface with the way you do combat. I didn't realize... Like, number one, I'm really impressed with the music and, like, the story behind it like i didn't realize it's barry burton saving leon off some ship or something like right. i didn't know any non-canon for some reason yeah well i guess because it wouldn't really make sense if it's canon jim right are we, do I, are, are, do we gonna, are we gonna worry about canon with resident evil here do i gotta pull out the excel sheet don't you the t how the t-virus don't started? you fucking dare do i need to <laughs> um no so far it's i'm impressed at what it was able to do I do think there's a bit too many. Have you played it yet? No, never did. Okay, like my one problem is it almost starts feeling like a Pokemon game because I feel like every five feet I move, oh, another zombie. Oh, another zombie. Uh, Where it's can like, you avoid them or is it just random? You can, but there's this weird thing. Like if you avoid them, then you can't re-engage with them unless they attack you, and then you can't get items off of them. It's very weird. And there's also this weird thing where I can't pick up shotgun ammo because I haven't found the shotgun. So I've literally passed over a gazillion shotgun rounds. They're like, can't get it unless you have the gun. Huh. I'm like, that's stupid. Weird. So uh, we'll see. But that is a game I, that's on my list anyway, so it was a no-brainer. I think my next game I'm going to start up, well, we have one more Burger King review to do. Yes, we do. So I'll be playing that game. But outside of that, um, it's really probably going to be Spider-Man for the PS4 or 5 at this point. Right. Since we're going to be reviewing that anyway. Yeah, I got to get on that too. Yeah, but uh, speaking of games that we need to play, that is really brought to us by you awesome patrons because that was a request. And uh, Jim and I, we've already at this point recorded the, bur the first two Burger King games. So those reviews should be out very sh shortly. And we tortured ourselves by playing through all three of them. Yep. 
Sure did. <laughs> but, they, uh, they are definitely $4 games. But, Jim, before we get any questions, crack out another beer. All right. I can't wait to see. Oh, wait. He already told me. Fat tire. Yeah. You're Which, in a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> you impatient fuck. I, Jim, I have many flaws. Being impatient is mate, definitely one of them. <laughs> it is true. Don't act like you weren't the kid that didn't want to sneak downstairs and see what you had for Christmas. It's true. <laughs> this is true. But, yes, back to the patrons. Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game, where for as little as $2 a month, you can ask a question we'll answer on every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. And once again, a sh big shout out to Aaron Reber for signing back up. He was away for a bit and just came back. So cheers, buddy. Cheers, dude. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, so questions. Just one this week from good old J.D. Mains. Uh, have you ever walked out of a movie theater because the movie was so bad? I did it once when my cousin and I left National Treasure. Really? <laughs> laughing after Cage finds Ben Franklin's secret glasses. <laughs> you I know, like National Treasure. I was going to say, I this within this past year is the first time I've ever seen that movie. Really? The wife was talking about it. <clears throat> I, I like revealed I never saw it because we were on a Nicolas Cage kick. And I was like, yeah, let's watch it. It's a Nicolas Cage movie. Like, what What can you really say? Yeah, it's a goofy early 2000s action, action adventure movie. It, yeah. yeah. In the same vein as, like, the Oceans 11 and 12. Right. It Yeah, it was fine. It's You know what you're getting out of it. Right. It's fun. It's stupid. It's fine. Uh, have I ever walked out of a movie? You know what? Here's a, here's, here's a reality. I'm either too dumb or too stubborn to do it. Like, yeah. the movie would truly have to be so grating to me that I... I'm not willing to stay. And, you know, I tough it out through some of the worst fucking games that some of you have asked me to play. So, yeah, movie, I always kind of look at it like it's not that long. Maybe it'll get better. Some of them didn't. So, no, unfortunately, I've never actually walked out of a movie. I've done a few. <laughs> of course you have. Because story. <laughs> no, not story. Well, what do you call it? <laughs> so, actually, probably one time because of... Well, yeah, it's a fuck, fuck you. <laughs> So first one I th first one I think I ever did was Fahrenheit 911, just because oh, I like never saw that. is the Michael Moore one oh, no, about I know yeah. What it was. yeah I just I yeah I had no interest back then yeah I mean I was def I was definitely rah 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 America back then too it's probably the wrong time for that <laughs> but <laughs> my how times have changed but <laughs> also like it's typical Michael Moore shit where like he has good ideas but he throws in so much shit out of context that you're just like Dude, there's no way it happened like that so yeah like it just pissed me off so like we're like all right let's get the fuck out of here. Then it was a Jet Li movie. Hero? I think it was called. Hero is, was that the one all in subtitles? Yeah, I think it was all in subtitles. But the subtitles wasn't a problem. I was just bored off my tit by it. Was Hero the one, is that, or is. I think it was like it, a samurai in that or something, right? Something like, or like a Chinese warrior. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Where, I think the covers, like him with a sword, right? Yeah. Something like, is there, was he in a movie called The One or One? Where like there was a bunch yes, of alternate versions of himself, yeah. and he basically Highlander. Oh yeah, that it was is a Asian good. Highlander, basically. Yeah, I never saw, it, but that is a good description. Yeah. Um. Yeah, hero. I here's the deal. After Romeo Must Die, I was hooked on Jet Li movies. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, he's the next Jackie Chan. Like I love all of his movies. Yeah, I remember Hero. It wasn't a rewatch for me. Yeah, it actually, I forget how the fuck it happened, but I actually wound up seeing it again in the theater, and I finished it. How? I I don't know. Were you on a date? I don't remember. It might have been a date. Mm, yeah. That would be, see, now that's something I would never do. I've Because uh, I think I was like, when we were going to it, whoever I was with, I was like, I oh, don't know, I kind of already walked out of this before, but I mean, I, mean, I guess <laughs> there's nothing else going on tonight, so might as well. Wait, Jim, are you saying you're easily peer pressured? <laughs> uh, who's to say, Brian? <laughs> who's, who's to say? Maybe I was just feeling a little more open to things that night. Trying to expand my horizons, Brian. I don't know about Facing that. Rainbow. <laughs> hey, let's see this movie. I don't know. I already saw it. All right. Well, let's see it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, fucking, what's the last one? Oh, Watchmen. You walked out of that. I fucking hated it. I see. I remember you saying you didn't like it, but I thought that was after. I thought your complaint was it was too long. So I assumed you watched. The I I eventually watched it on TV okay. all the way through. Now. Your complaint with that movie, from what I remember, was more that it was too too much like the comic. Yeah, like my it isn't the problem that like it was too much like the comic. Like I appreciated that it tried to really emulate the comic, but I think it like Zack Snyder just doesn't know how to direct. 
So like his like the pacing was all over the place. Like I don't know, I just couldn't stand it. Was it uh, slow motion a lot? It wasn't even a slow motion. It was just like the overall feel of it. Like someone just felt like this isn't good. And then I talked to a lot of people, and they're like, "Oh, I fucking love Watchmen." And I'm like, "How? Why?" I never love. You know what it was? <clears throat> I had zero context going into it. Like I didn't know the comics at all. Yeah. Um, that was the first. And I didn't even mind the change at the very end either. Which, yeah, well, what was the change instead of he turned into, like, an octopus in the comic, right? Well, he, or... like, genetically engineered, like, a giant suicide squid that, like, attacked it. Okay. So, like, it brought everyone together and shit. Gotcha. Kind of like when Bush did 9-11. God. <sighs> did you, ha- you, you just had to, <laughs> just had to do it. it? Just had to do it. Well, Jim, had to how, bring it all full circle. Jim, how would more. you know? You walked out, so you never saw the end. <laughs> Um, context clues, Brian. Context clues. Yeah, I did. You know what? I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It was something I've watched. I watched in its entirety one time, and I've seen bits and pieces of it. The thing I remember thinking when I first saw it, though, was like, oh, this is like different for a superhero movie. Oh, yeah. It was like the first one where, you know, I, I'm used to like Punisher, Blade, things like that, that were anti hero, even though. Especially at the time. Yeah, but that was like the real, like, oh, it's anti hero. Right? When you watch that, it makes sense how the DC movies turn into what they did. It's like he never grew up past that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Jeffrey D. Morgan was pretty cool. I don't even remember. What, what was his uh, guy's name? Uh, uh, fuck. What's his name? Happy or? No, not Happy. Shit, I can't remember right now. Like, I remember like like all the other names, like Al Man and Rorschach and yeah. fucking Ozzy Mandias. I can remember Ozzy Mandias, but I can't remember what he was. Shit. He was like the most one of the most important yeah, characters exactly. too. Well, and that, and I also remember everyone talks shit so much shit on Batman's voice and Rorschach's voice was Batman's voice at its worst the entire movie. Yeah, but it didn't annoy me as much with that. I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know what it was. It almost seemed to fit more with Rorschach. Maybe this is your Rorschach test. Brad, get the ink. Damn it. <laughs> It's a dick, Jim. I didn't even show you it yet. It's a dick. School, <laughs> church. <sighs> Fuck, Jim. What? <laughs> Don't say what. What? Oh, man, I'm really, I'm kind of mad at myself. That I've never actually walked out. The closest movie. You, you have know, no gumption, you cheap you know, bastard. The closest. Well, to be fair, if I was going to a movie, I was on a date. I wasn't watching the movie. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, what else are you going to do when you're 15 at a, you know, where else are you going to go on dates, Jim? <laughs> Didn't have a lot of, <laughs> you can't help me with that one a lot there, bro. Well, you so know, it was movie theaters. You know what? There's two, I had. two movies that I was really close to walking out of. Pootie Tang. <laughs> Pootie Tang? Pootie Tang's <laughs> fucking great. And, uh. Why are you walking out of Pootie Tang? What the hell is, um, oh my God, the movie. I, I I call it Henry, Henry Winkler, but it wasn't him. The one that was like the the kung fu thing where he's holding like the two gerbils. Kung Pao. Kung Pao. You don't like Kung Pao? I didn't then. Oh, uh, yeah. it, you know what it was? Those movies came out when spoofs were overdone already. It was at the end of the spoof era, and I was like, "All right, you were burnt out. Okay, I, that's I fine. was completely burnt out. So I didn't walk walk out, but I almost did. Nah, Pootie Tang's a fucking classic. <laughs> it's no ladies' man. It's up there. <laughs> it's no ladies man. Don't ladies man. You? Ladies man is another classic. Yeah. See, you spent your time with fucking scary movie seven. That was your problem. <laughs> Should have saved it for the classics. <laughs> don't you dare call Pootie Tang. Pootie Tang is a cinematic masterpiece, you motherfucker. And don't you fuckers dare request we watch Pootie Tang. Ten dollars here. Don't you dare make Brian watch Pootie Tang. Don't you you know what? Make Jim watch Watchmen. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> I thought of that shirt. $10 is $10. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cheap date. Thank you, JD. We appreciate the question. And make sure everyone listening or watching, get your questions in because we really appreciate you supporting us. So get them in there so we can uh, answer anything. Yep. And also, if you're new to the show and listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, please leave a five-star review. We'll read... Anyway. Right. I can't talk. <laughs> I've only done this a thousand times. Oh man, that that one IP half of an IPA is really getting to you, Jim. See, but that's, see, that's why we don't start the fancy shit, Brian. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we we'll leave a five star review. We will read any uh, five star review you leave us. So. Thank you, guys. All right, Chambers. So, quick question before we move on. Yep. I know we've both had fat tire a million times. We it's always a classic. 
Do you think it definitely outshines the uh, yeah, I like it more. IPA? I like it more. You like it more? Yeah. yeah. It's just a standard amber ale, but it's a really good one. Like most New Belgium shit, you don't go wrong with. Like if you want a really solid, like, like when you said Sam Adams, I kind of considered them kind of on like the same tier. Oh, yeah, for sure. So like definitely if you just want like a solid brewery that's like better than, you know, the Miller Coises of the world. But, you know, not quite the, you know, the stupidly overly crafty stuff. Like, New Belgium's definitely a solid one. Now, let me ask you, because I've, after doing as much diving into different beer styles as I have, I find, <clears throat> so, it's funny, because Amber Ales are very much like Vienna Lagers, which is what Sam Alm is. Yeah. I think they're probably two of the most underrated styles, because they're very drinkable, but they have a nice amount of the, like the malt balance, so they're almost kind of sweet. But they're never like heavy, and they could be sessiony if they weren't heavier than light beers. Yeah, it's kind of along the the same lines of how you don't see a ton of lagers and pilsners out of craft places yep. because basically they're easy to fuck up. Yeah. So like, if you fuck those up, like you can tell. Whereas if you fuck up an IPA, you just go, "Oh no, this one's you know, it's just yeah. extra hoppy." So. Like, I, like, let's face it, IPAs are something you have to get used to. Yeah, for sure. Whereas these, you can actually be like, oh, this is a good beer. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But no, they, they pretty much have it perfected, I got to say. No, no. I, I think it's one of the best amber ales out there. So if you haven't tried New Belgium Fat Tire, eh, you're missing out. Yeah. And they're like even if you're an IPA snob, like they have like four or five different Voodoo Ranger IPA styles now, and they're all good too. Like, oh yeah, for sure. If you if you've never had New Belgium, just get a mix pack and you'll probably enjoy most of it. Now see the problem though, Jim, is if you drink too many, you will get a little bit of a hangover, won't you? Yeah, very possible. It's a little thicker. Now, you and I have the tried and true method now, which we didn't when we were younger. Liquid fucking <sighs> IV. Godsend. It is I can't, I can't praise that shit enough. Whenever anybody tells me they've been drinking or that, I say, get your liquid IV, have it before, have it the next morning. Yep. You can even have it right before you go to bed. Before then, it was water, Gatorade, make yourself throw up, whatever Pedialyte. you were going to do. It, it, Pedialyte even kind of came late, I feel like. That was only an like, eight-year-ago discovery for us. Yeah. In our college days, there was nothing but... Science is a beautiful thing, isn't it, Jim? Yes, it is. So, uh, the Swedish-made uh, Merkel supplement claims to reduce alcohol concentration in the body by half within 30 minutes of having a drink. So, basically, you're supposed to have two pills taken an hour before drinking for a maximum effect. Yeah. And, yeah, it basically keeps breaking down the alcohol <laughs> for up to 12 hours, they say. Scientists say. So it's funny because they had like a link to an actual article from the Metro that mm -hmm. gives you a 404 not found now. So, oh boy. Well, I actually dove pretty deep. I was very curious. I wanted to see what, what's in these pills, and they, and they list them out. I'm not going to try to pronounce them right now. We'll have them down below. But two of them are, are basically probiotics. One is commonly found within the gut. The other one is not. And then they have – um, what, what's it? It's a – uh, Lact or it's basically NAC, which is a precursor to glutathione, which breaks down the acetylhydolide, which <laughs> I have to fucking say that, <clears throat> which is apparently what gives you the hangovers, which is like a byproduct of the alcohol being broken down in your body. Yeah, but essentially, what it does I'm a science. is it blocks the alcohol from getting to your liver to begin with and can block up to they go from 50 to 70 percent, they say. Now, what I will say is they've made it available in Great Britain um, as of this month. Yeah, you can't ship it like anywhere in the U.S. yet. No, because they wouldn't get FDA approved. Like that's the thing is, I don't well, know. They it. got around the medical shit in the U.K. too because it's not technically like a medicine. It's no, it, yeah, it's just like most supplements or or like uh, what the hell's word I'm looking for? Like workout powders and shit. Right. They're not medically monitored. But in the U.S., a lot of that shit still needs to get some kind of clarification. Yeah. Um, but here's the interesting thing. <clears throat> and no shops are stocking it. You have to buy it all online. Yeah. They say very clearly, they're like, this is not meant, like, if you're a heavy drinker, this is probably not for you because it'll block the alcohol to a certain percentage. And if you take it before you drink, it'll actually take a lot more alcohol to get you drunk. So if you're going out and you know you're binging, like, let's be honest, 
mm-hmm. most people, especially in America, do. This really isn't going to be for you. This is for <clears throat> like what Jim and I are doing right now. We're having like maybe three or four beers. Not going to get us drunk, but it might make us feel a little eh, in the morning. If we take that, it takes the it like it may wipe out all those effects. It also is the back end of that shit apparently has a lot of B12, which is usually the number one thing you want from things like we were saying, like the Pedialytes, liquid IV. I don't, how do I say this without sounding like an alcoholic? I don't know. Impossible. Unless you literally are someone who's like one glass of wine really fucks me up or one beer really gets me and it makes me feel like complete shit the next day. That could be useful for you. But yeah, if you're going out and you know you're going to overdo it, you shouldn't bother getting it, is what they say. And then, as Jim alluded to, I looked into a bunch of studies that were done. It was interesting, because the only takeaways were, they're like, you know, they <clears throat> they didn't like the way it was tested, because they, they didn't take into consideration, like, all the factors of, like, people's weight, what they were eating that day, this, that, and the other. So it's like, yeah, alcohol is one of the most... I feel like it's one of the most versatile things on how it affects people. Like, I mean, let's put it this way. I drank my fucking dick off this weekend. Like, it, we're recording on the 5th. It was just 4th of July weekend. So, as we do in the States, you ever do it. Have yeah. a block party, had a birthday party, other shit. So, yeah. And I mean, I woke up every time without a hangover. Yeah. And there's been random days where I have, like, four beers or something or other, and I wake up and I'm dead the next day. You feel day. terrible. Yeah. So... Here's the deal. I don't want, and the thing it reads is, it also will eliminate the effect of, like, the buzz for you. Hmm. So I don't want a pill that would do that, to be honest. I'm fine at this point. Liquid IV, if I can feel good in the morning, as long as I don't wake up with that type of headache where you can't move, Yeah. that's the only thing I really want to avoid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let other people try that. I think I definitely prefer the head- the puking to the headache. Oh, puking! I can say t- one leads to the other, but I can I can puke. But if I don't have that headache, then if if my stomach feels like crap, I don't care. If my head hurts and I can't move out of bed, that'll ruin my whole goddamn day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I will. Uh, that's the worst part. Figure out a way to completely get rid of headaches. People are like fucking take Tylenol. Yeah, if he gets rid of the buzz, then what's the fucking point? Yeah, that's the thing. The buzz is the fun part. Then exactly, <laughs> that's how Jim falls asleep on tables. I've only done that a few times. <laughs> See, that should not be a sentence you say. Recently. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, I, I do want to follow this because, I'll be honest, this is not some shit I would buy. Yeah. I'm not buying some, uh, some Euro experimental fucking uh, beer pill. That's for goddamn sure. Jim's like, I'll buy all the penis pills from the gas station, but goddamn it. <laughs> one of them has to work one of these times. <laughs> I'm like Jim. That's a that's a packet of ketchup. <laughs> ah, rest in peace, smiling Bob. You were gone too soon. God damn it, Jim. So yeah, you guys let us know, especially if you're from the UK, because we know some of you bastards out there listen. Uh, if you want to be a guinea pig and try it, let us know how it goes. Yep. Because Jim, what did our good buddy Matt say about the UK? <sighs> <laughs> Fucking. So, I don't know if we ever told this story. I think we did, like, ages ago on here. Yeah. But, uh, so, my old roommate, Matt, from college, uh, we were in a class. I was like, okay, we got to set, set up some debates. So, Brian, this buttfucker, <laughs> immediately, him and our buddy Chris go, okay, me and Chris. I'm like, wait, wait, no. So, I was with Matt. Matt's a lovely boy. But he can, he can be one for generalizations at times. Let's put it that way. Let's put it lightly. Yeah. So the somehow our uh, topic became like the flashpoint in Great Britain, which is like you know the time of night when everything's closing, so everyone starts to drink as fast as they can. Basically, almost like last call, but like you know diff- somehow different, you know Brit bong shit. Yeah. So as we're doing this presentation, Matt starts to go. So you know this is a real problem because as we all know, you know the English are drunks, and the TAs <laughs> who were like monitoring it and like grading us immediately just like looked around like what. What? Like, what did he just say? What? What? What was that? Wait, 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 wait. And like, you could, you could like physically see the, 
it also coming from me. It also might not have helped you at the Dave Chappelle uh, Sam Adams commercial. No, 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 no. So we had two drafts, and we were <laughs> we were j- judging depending on the uh, the seriousness of the TAs whether or not to use the Sam Jackson Dave Chappelle picture. As See, soon as we walked in, we were like, "Okay, we're using the one without it." <laughs> See, Jim, you that's sh- called planning ahead. You should have taken off of me and Chris when we got done our presentation. The one girl who wanted to ask the question. We weren't done. It was the middle of the fucking presentation. It wasn't even question time. It was the teachers. That's why you say it's not time for questions, and you move right along. (laughs) You plow through, Jim. You don't stop. Uh. (laughs) Jim, how would you get graded on that? I think we got like a B still or something. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't great. I don't think you remember. Well, (laughs) probably not. It was probably like a D. (laughs) It was the the best presentation. Uh, Yeah. Good old Matt. But uh, yeah, so if you're if if you are from the UK, let us know. But um, Jim, you know I'm not so much worried about the UK as I am about those damn Canucks. Ah, especially the Quebecians. They are they are interesting folk, aren't they? Well, especially in Quebec because that's the that's French I mean. sector. So, and they always want to secede. So, for those of you not in the know, because I sure as shit wasn't <clears throat> before we looked at these topics. Capital peelers, though. They have great peelers, and if you don't know what peeler is, Google it. Um, there's a little bill being introduced called Bill 96 that is essentially, for all intents and purposes, saying that you must use French when communicating, uh, speaking, signs, postage. It doesn't matter with your, whether you're dealing with customers in Quebec or sending shit out. And uh, for those of you unaware, Quebec is one of the major video game developer cities and that's really thanks to they have some goddamn amazing uh tax write-offs and basically you pay no taxes on shit there so a lot of companies are moving there you got ubisoft um I, the list I, I looked at it's actually staggering how many um game developers are there right now but as they're finding out and this comes to us from cbc but you can also look at a bunch of other links um that i'll post below as well this Bill 96 is basically saying to these game companies, everyone must learn and communicate in French. And it's a comp- and most of the jobs tend to be remote. So it's becoming a real problem. And it may kill the game industry in Quebec because a lot of people didn't sign up for that. And they're already seeing a mass exodus. So I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, it's funny because this is kind of a follow-up to an article we did a couple weeks ago. Where France itself was like starting to ban mm-hmm. esports terms because you know they were afraid of it, you know, fucking up the French language because they didn't have like true French versions of you know a lot of these words. Mm-hmm. So Montreal being French Canada, they were just following suit basically. And according to the article, there's like eleven thousand workers in the video game industry in Quebec. Yep. So like you said, fuckload of people brings in two billion a year in revenue basically. And they had like a case study in here. They changed the name of the person, obviously. Yeah. But basically, like he got hired by a company, and you know he was. They were talking about the bill, and he's like, you know, I don't know French. Like, do I have to learn this? And they're kind of like, ah, no, that's not a problem. And then once he got hired, they're like, oh, by the way, you need to learn French. And, and even what he said was, uh, English wasn't even his first language, but internationally, English is taught kind of almost. It's pretty regular. I'll say that. He said to learn French on top of that would be a real like difficulty for him. So, Jim, what is the problem with your people? One, not my people. <laughs> Two, all you ever need to learn is Amelie du Fromage, and you can sail right through. I just don't. There is a. I mean, when you read the bill and you read like articles about it, <clears throat> there is this like very. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Go on. There's a Napoleon complex here because it's like this goddamn chip on their shoulder. Like, oh, we need to reserve our, like, can you imagine other countries doing that? We have to protect that language. Exactly. I don't get like the need, especially I, I get in France. I know this is a French what, what would you even call it's Canadian it's still Canada it's like yeah I mean it's still Canada but they don't even consider themselves like the rest of Canada but either. that's kind of like Texas here but they're still a state yeah and, and but could you imagine if they're like but they are their own little world th- they are but could you imagine if they're like no companies here unless you like 
how much shit did Geno's get when they were like only English speaking customers? Oh, that was a big old controversy. And that was a small, but this is a small private company that's like, you know, hey, they threw out a sign there that was controversial. I'm pretty sure they took it down by this point. Well, I think it was after uh, Geno died. Yeah. It was either Pat or Geno. I forget which one. But this is like Jim saying, it's a major issue in the video game industry, which is arguably one of their most profitable things right now. Mm-hmm. You're going to bite the hand that feeds and then just send those people out to other areas of Canada. That's all that's going to happen. They're going to be like, well, fuck that. And a lot of these companies like Ubisoft leaves. And um, I was trying to remember the names off the top of my head, but I can't. Some of these other big companies, like why would you even open up shop there? Is a tax write off really going to be worth it if you can't get the skilled workers? Because you're limiting right, your right. work base. You're trying to, Are you trying to call French speakers not skilled workers? I'm saying... Because you're right. <laughs> I mean, oh. how many times do we save them, Jim? Enough. Too many. That's all I'm saying. America. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I actually I put this out here. I was asking anyone from Canada, and I got some interesting responses. I think most people think it's a pretty bad idea. I don't know why they would put it through, but then again, Canada is known for some pretty goofy laws when it comes to language. This is true. I mean, and actually, we know like a surprising amount of like Toronto area Canadians. So like they they probably just like over at them like ah fuck them. Yeah, that, that's all it is. Like at that point, they're probably just like those goofy Quebecs. We need to go back there and purposely just speak English, Jim. <laughs> See some peelers. <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm. I will gladly go back to Shapery. <laughs> Oh, Jim. So before we move on to another piece of bullshit, I need you to grab me one of those goddamn core lights. Aha. Now, is these yours or a neighbor's? I don't even know at this point. Like, I don't know if it was um, because, like, originally we were just going to, like, my neighbor got the keg. The mountains are blue. Mountains are blue. They're good to go. So my neighbor got a keg. And he's like, yeah, everyone can just drink the keg. And then my wife's like, you know, I was telling, like, the band and shit, like, no, they got a keg. Just drink from the keg. Then my wife starts telling people, you know, BYOB on top of it. So everyone starts bringing booze. And I'm like, <laughs> there's a keg there's here. A keg. <laughs> and now I have like 10,000 cases of beer. Now we did put a hurting. There is a big hurting put, but still need some help. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Jim, I know you are a, uh, you're a jumper honor of crypto stuff. Of bad trends, of NFTs, of supporting the I shit. I never that... went into NFTs. Never went into that space. Couldn't afford it. Exit. Well, you tend to follow these terrible ideas. Look, and... Bri, I was planning for my future. That was my retirement. <laughs> and and the latest in the continual. And this is very recent. Fucking stupid ideas. I poly poly polyum polyum polyum. I Bri. They're introducing the Polyum One, a multi-chain console for Web3 gaming. It's about damn time, I say. Now, here's the deal. If you're a normal person and you're like, what's Web3? What's Polychain? What's all this shit? Even I barely know what Web3 is. Oh, I, I had to look all this up because I had no idea. It, isn't Web3 just like basically like the crypto version of like the future of the internet? That's what they are predicting. It's yeah. going to be the next Everything's version gonna of the internet. Everything's going to be through blockchain. And, like, and it's decentralized. Yeah. That's all it is. They can't use you and your information as data anymore, but you just, instead of trading in your data that you don't know is being traded for you, you have to buy and trade everything in these bullshit made up things. So instead of making someone else money, you're making those people money. Yeah. <laughs> so this is... I got nothing. Th- this, this, this stupid ass picture of a controller on a platform which if you try to read any information, and I, I tried, you look up specs. We're going to do 4K, 8K gaming at 120 oh, that, FPS. That's the one everyone's going like, wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Fucking high-end computers right now can't do 8K at 120. Yeah. And, oh, by the way, Touch ID, and they use Touch ID the way that Apple ID is written, which it's a proprietary type of um, technology, which... You can't just do that. So you read all those and you go, okay, that seems too good to be true. And when you read up about games, well, we're in the development of getting games. It's going to be very exciting. Da, da, da. It's type. It, it's speaking the way Trump was when you would ask him about policies or shit. <laughs> and it's just really... It's the best. It's the future. It, it's really ridiculous. And what's sad is 
some assholes out there are going to put forth money for it. I just like how people are like, what do you call it? Well, what are the games going to be? Because they're saying they're Web3 games. And they're like, well, we already have Web3 game developers. And they're like, who? Yeah. And they're like, we have some. We have, yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, it, 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 it blow, I mean, it doesn't blow my mind. I, this type of stupid shit was bound to come. But please, number one, and we're going to get to it very soon. We've actually, seen enough legit technology companies that have failed. This is another one. Don't even entertain it. But it is interesting that this is popping up. Now, I'll, I'll give them one thing. Oh, God. Don't you dare. No. One thing. I'll Careful. give them. For now. Careful. They state that they will have a functional prototype ready before they take any pre-orders or funding. For now. For now. Yes. Which, That's why I said caveat. Yeah, yeah. The biggest caveat is they'll show you a YouTube video of their working prototype, and then they'll take it. Yep. So let's go through their little thread, because they had, understandably, a lot of criticism thrown their way. Also, good on them for launching a Web3-based crypto console during the biggest crypto crash ever. <laughs> Prices Wonderful are down. timing. Jim, prices are down. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> it's a bear market, Brian. <laughs> buy the dip. Got to buy the dips. Got to buy all the shit coins. Buy the shit coins now. Be a millionaire later. But, but Jim, everyone was so sure. Bitcoin's going to go up to 100K. Brian, stocks just go up. That's how it works. That, that, it always just, it only goes up, right, Jim? <laughs> no, not Brian. I'm very intimately aware of how stocks always go up. Very intimately aware, especially in crypto. <laughs> but, but then they dip, don't they, Jim? Don't they? Right, right. If you don't look at your portfolio, they always go up. That's that's the key there. You only look when you get the positive. Right. Not going to make it. That's what that talk is. All right. <laughs> Fahrenheit nine eleven. No, I, you don't know. Not going to make. That's a that's a meme among the crypto boys that are basically like anytime people panic when you know it shits out because it's not based on anything. They're like, yeah. You're not going to make it. Yeah. So they just hold on to shit forever and ever. I mean, I hope those board monkeys are. Uh... Really making people money still, Jim. Oh, cool. I do love the stories of, like the guy who did an NFT of like the first uh, Jack Dorsey tweet, paid like three million for it, and they're like, he's set to lose three million dollars on this. It's like, yeah, good, good. One, I, fuck I Jack, and two, fuck you. I feel no sh no pity for any of them. Yeah. So basically, what they're saying is, well, the first thing they address is that they didn't copy the GameCube logo, which I mean, it's kind of just a GameCube logo turned around. It's like, come on, buddy. Yeah, but we will illustrate a new logo that is original. Oh, that's nice. Then the console will have games and exclusive games. We're currently in talks with different Web3 game developers, like who, and we'll make some announcements soon. We know that a console can't be successful without games. We oh, have good. experience in hardware and software. Okay, what? Well, Never here. And the console will be built and we'll execute on the roadmap. And <laughs> who we're building for Web3 to help it expand. I mean, they have a they have a button on the controller to instantly hit your crypto wallet, Bri, to pay for shit. Oh, I'm glad they made they that figured, convenient. They, Super convenient. Yeah, they made they worked that out. Hmm. Seems like their priorities are in the right place, Jim. And then, hey, join our Discord. So, don't join theirs. Join ours. Link below. <sighs> Anyone out there listening? And I fucking hate Kotaku, but even them with their little snarky bitch ass articles. Their article on this was crypto boys basically announce a console that'll never come out. And it's like I can't argue this. No. Nope. There's now, no way this happens. Now, we are going to follow this because I'm curious where this is going to go. If we, it, we love us a good clown show. But, Jim, would you say this is oddly on the tails of the biggest gaming clown show of the past year? Oh, easily of the past few years. I, I mean, for those of you, we've been following this for longer than we would have liked. and But it's just so entertaining. I here's the deal i said more entertaining the than the games ever would have been i feel once again sorry bad. smash jt Sm sorry. Smart. sorry bud i know you you basically bought a crypto here and the amico is officially i mean it's been dead for a while but now they've even given up uh excuse me they've even given up on renewing the uh trademark which if you don't know that's a pretty bad, like, that's like the basis. Yeah, so I actually learned something thanks to this article. Basically, when you file for a trademark, you have to produce something yep. within two years, or you have to either file for extensions or give it up. Exactly. So they've filed about four extensions already, mm -hmm. and they're coming up on their fifth one, which passed. So now the article's headline's a little misleading because they still have two months to make a decision, basically. 
think, but the fact that it got this far, they didn't let it lapse before until let's now. Let's put it this way. If this was your lifelong passion project, there's no chance you're like, hey, I'm busy playing Fall Guys. I can't get to renewing our trademark or whatever. We've said, unfortunately, the Amico has had tons of issues. They had investor problems. They had loss of money. They were always reporting a negative. They had a prototype, which they showed the YouTube things. As Jim said, Smash JT has covered it better than probably most. Yep. Um, they had their... Speaking of intimate knowledge. I mean, they've had their crazy fan defenders who have even fallen off at this point. And Kai said, I can't even defend this anymore. Like, this is getting too much. There's still a very small community. And, but, I mean, I'm saying I feel like I've seen some of the bigger names that were defending it go, okay. Oh, yeah, a lot of them have fallen off. Like, yeah. like so it's a sinking ship. I guess I can't appreciate... You and I have said many times, do you do you believe it was actually good intentions, just misinformed? Yeah, I, I think Tommy really wanted to come out of the family-friendly console, but he just completely botched it. Yeah. So here's the deal. And then panicked a billion different times with a billion bad moves, and Ego got in the way, and now we are where we are. So what is his path to redemption on this? <laughs> Release it? I mean... I mean, it could, like... Like the last one we had fun with. That I was convinced a Polymega was never happening. But to their credit, it came out. It happened. It happened. And you kind of don't hear anything about it now. So it's fine of a thing where it's like, it's okay. Yeah. Kind of does what it wants. A little overpriced. Whatever. But it came out. Yeah. Good for them. It, it was a niche thing to begin with. Right. Overpri we felt or, or overpriced. Or like the Atari VCS, which people thought was never coming out. And then it randomly came it out. Did. Yeah. And then it didn't do anything special. But it's got its people who like to play with it. So here's... I guess there's a fine dance nowadays. If you are a developer of software, games, whatever you want to call it, do you do you take the risk of overshooting your load, over promoting, over marketing? It gets traction in the wrong place. Like it gets too much traction, and you can't live up to the hype. Like, but then again, you might need that in order to fund it. So it's like that catch twenty two. Yeah. So I don't know what the right approach is. Like, do you be a sleeper? That comes on a market fully developed and be like, "Hey, we finally did it after you know ten years," but then it might have been past your time. Or do you do this route, which is get everyone hyped, get enough people that were supporting it, and then you can't deliver on shit? It's tough because nothing besides the big companies is taken off or worked. Like if you're not Nintendo, Sony, or Xbox, and even fucking Microsoft has their problems. Oh yeah. Like even as with all the money in the world, like Microsoft, they struggle to keep up sometimes, a lot of the time. So, like, yeah, uh, I don't see how any of these little guys, unless they do something absolutely ridiculous, like Web three gaming, how they can ever come back and do we know anything Jim's buying it <laughs> that'll ever break into the market. So here's my question: Is the problem more? In their minds, they're competing with the big guys. Should they just expect, like... Well, the Amiga was never supposed to compete with the big guys. It was supposed to be its own thing. Yeah. But um, I try to think, like, what is its market? Its market had to be at least the classic consoles. The NES, it, Super it, NES, the Sega. And he was doing it smart because he was really sucking up to the Atari age people. Yeah. So, like, that's the people you had to go for for it. The people who knew the old IPs and shit. And it was originally going to be a very cheap console. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't keep to that. But if it, they kept it as a super cheap alternative, there's there's a market for a cheap alternative. Now, Jim, if I'm trying to put on my devil's advocate hat here and argue for it, could it also be while this was in development, it was the worst two years of manufacturing and issues that this country has seen in a while, which could have added to his inadequacies as a developer? Didn't help. Did not help. I'll I'm, give him that. You know, I'm saying not like... Help. But yeah, so to your point, like, yeah, doing it during a pandemic, does that help it? No. But also, I mean, out of the gate using a Chinese knockoff smartphone from, 20, from 2016 as the base of your tech doesn't help either. So, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know where exactly it all went wrong, but it's just like, you know, a cacophony of failure. Like, everything went wrong. Yeah. So, so is the lesson out there, don't try? Can't win, don't try. That's how I live my life, Brian. <laughs> I I I said I do feel bad for the Smash JTs for the people that backed this and wanted something good. 
that sucks. I hope there is some way for you to get money back or just like you said, at least some of these people get the system, get something out of it. If you walk away completely empty handed, that really sucks. But I feel like how many times Tommy at least owes some blowies. I mean, how many rides can he give in his Ferrari? He's got to give a couple. He's got to give a lot. Gas ain't cheap. That's where you're paying them back. I mean, it's I like I said, I I don't relish in that failure. I just come on, man. Like I I feel like so much time and effort was put into the marketing and the reaching out and the community aspect of it that it wasn't realistic enough to know you had a solid foundation. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. I, I don't know. That sucks. We've said it all like a million times at this point. But yeah. So, but long story short, could be the end times. So, Tommy, if you come on next week, we'll talk about it. Which exactly. <laughs> You'll get at least two sales maybe if you come on here. <laughs> I can promise you that. So, yeah. I, I'm curious if anyone out there you're listening if you were interested in it or you know somebody who was let us know because uh kind of sucks you know yeah it's a shame but hey this is what it is you also saw it coming kind of like crypto <laughs> or is he behind web3 oh what, this, this what if that system? motherfucker was behind <laughs> what this if, what if he's that like would be some the amico shit. lives on <laughs> oh they should merge the future of web3 gaming is the amico oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Please, I need the content. <laughs> Fuck, Jim. What? <laughs> Don't you dare. What? All it's right. Easy. J- Chambers, so I have a little recurring bit. I've been slacking off on it because I haven't thought of a good enough, which is better for us in, in a little while. Been a little bit. But we both talked about it, and we're both actively playing it. Well, when we pulled like 130, 50-some out of our ass, eventually it's going to fall off. You're just like, I don't even know what to say anymore. And the amount of times I've like re-put the same thing, I'm like, oh, wait. Oh, this versus this. You're like, we did this. I was like, what? Yeah. You're like, that was episode two. I'm like, fuck. Um, so Jim and I, you know, we're late to the party. We know it was out before, but a lot of people are just now jumping on the Fall Guys bandwagon. It, the, the first pandemic meme game. Yeah. But this now feels like, see, I never knew Fall Guys was a pandemic meme game because it was only on PS4, right? It was only on, yeah. Or I think Steam, too. Steam, yeah. But for Jim and I, it was basically non-existent. Right. When I think pandemic games, there's only two games I think of. Animal Crossing and Among Us. Like, that, to well, me, that's... Fall, Fall Guys was... Animal Crossing was more of its own thing, but for, like, the multiplayer party game... Oh, no, no, Among, yeah. uh, Fall Guys was the game before Among Us really took yeah, off. Yeah, but then Among Us came and said, get the fuck out of the way. And s- since has... What's interesting is Among Us actually finally did come out on like everything. Yeah, in like an actual retail release. Now, I don't know. Does it seem like anyone's playing that anymore? I don't know. No one talks about it anymore. Yeah. It, they talk about it more as the Amogus meme than they do than like anything else. Actually playing it. Yeah. So now Fall Guys coming out on Xbox, especially being on Game Pass for free, it's like it's a no brainer. We're gonna play it and yeah, it's on every system and it's pure well, it's not pure cross uh, platform. But uh, I mean, when I played, it was it was PS4 my, and PC. Well, I, I think I thought PS4 is its own thing. I thought like Nintendo was. On, well, oh, you know what? No, you know what? No, I'm wrong. I think yeah. that is like pure cross platform. Yeah. So, um, my which is better is is it Fall Guys or Among Us? Now, obviously, I have we both have more time with Among Us. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're both very simple, and obviously. I feel like it's an unfair comparison when you... I mean, they're completely different games. They're completely different, but I still think it's a fair comparison in the question of which do you get more... I don't know if tension's the right word. But, like, I guess tension is the right word. Like, as you, like, like when we were playing, especially when we were playing together, there's a couple times of Among Us, and I'm purposely blaming you knowing it's not you. Yeah. And you're like, no, fuck this. Yeah, there's, you're a, like, there's a lot of <laughs> griefing in that game. There, like, the griefing aspect, the psychology in and the, the fuckery in Among Us is, like, all the way up here. Yeah. Like, you can grief in Fall Guys, but you're not going to win griefing. And you, you'll fuck yourself up more, and honestly, the griefing is so... I feel like all they would need to do to make the griefing better in a, in Fall Guys is a push mechanic instead of a pull. Oh yeah, one push mechanic. That'd be some dick shit. And right all there. of a sudden, the game would be much better griefing because especially near the falls. Um, 
Fall Guys, I look at as, I can't really say it's skill-based. It might be timing-based a little bit, but it's really, there is a, a huge element of luck if you know the levels, if you know this, yeah. it helps you. Among Us, it doesn't matter what you are. Even if you're a Grace talk, Among Us, you don't have to play the game at all. No, not a, like you could do nothing and you can get all your fun out of griefing or whatever. Um, or you can do nothing and like still be sneaky enough about it and fucking people just think you're not the guy. Yeah. And when you are the guy in Among Us, there is such a satisfaction of like, who are you going to kill first? If you're playing with your friends, you know you're going after them first. Yep. Um, and there's that moment in Kick Among Us. those fuckers right out of the game. <laughs> you know there's that moment in Among Us when you go into a room with somebody else and you know you're not the killer. You're like, oh, fuck. Am I about to die? <laughs> like, there's such a, a tension. Whereas I never felt that tension with Fall Guys. I always kind of felt like this is just a fucking me- This is kids in a sandbox. Yeah. Like, it's it's just goofy-ass fun. Um, and not the old E-Bombs World video. Do not look that up. I don't even know what that is. I don't want to know what that is, Jim. Brian, are you aware of sounding? Sounding? Ooh, are you in for a treat? Jim, I didn't know rule... Uh, <laughs> fuck. Google, wait, wait, Google don't say it. Later. Don't say it. Fuck. Google. What was the rule? It was rule. You forget already? 36? Close. 34. 34. Okay. Um, so I guess my question is, I don't even know fun. I guess, yeah. Which one do you have more fun with playing so far? You know what? I was going to say, just to, for the overall, which is better, I think for me, probably Fall Guys I'm going to go with. And I mean, it might it might help to be fair. It has you know shiny new toy aspect going on. Sure, but I feel like this is a thing that I can play like and just randomly pick up and play down the line, and still have fun with. Where uh, and and like I don't need to be as invested in. Like it's a game I'm more likely to keep going back to. Where Among Us, I played for like two months. And I was like, this is fun. And then like after a while, you're either good at the strategy or you're not. Whereas. Pardon me. <laughs> Whereas Fall Guys, I am a goddamn mess of a human being. <laughs> Whereas with Fall Guys, you have, um, you know, there's the luck base that you said too, but it's also you're still playing more of an actual game with it's it. It's an actual game. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I, I'm like you. If you would go... and there's sometimes where, like, even on the first level, like there are just sometimes I just cannot get out of a thing of falling. Yeah. And, and then like I fucking lose. I'm like, God damn it! Like I'm better than this. I. You know what it is? Maybe I tie my f- experience more with... Your fun is torturing me. It, it is so much fun. And it's also... It can just... You can decide. Like, I 90% of times... you wa- Anyone who's watched me stream, it doesn't matter what game. If I'm playing Dead by Daylight, if I'm playing any game that requires teamwork, I kind of get fun out of, like, I want to be the one that completes the most shit. So I was always the one among us, like, I'm actually doing the jobs. I'm like, I'm not trying to politic and all this bullshit. But there were sometimes I'm like, I'm going in here and I'm just trying to fuck over. like so. And there was something deeply satisfying about bluffing out somebody. <laughs> like, like when you get someone killed, and you're like, oops, sorry. Like, I didn't yep. know. like there is something. It, it's like playing poker. And when you bluff and you get it, you go, ooh, I want to chase that feeling. Yep, that is a And high. eventually it gets you and you go, fuck. There's also the other end of that, which is, Someone blames you and is bluffing you, and you're like, no, I'm the fucking one. To-. And you know they're the killer. And then I purposely wait till the end. I'm like, you fucking idiots. I told you it was him. Yeah. Like, there's that aspect, too. Whereas Fall Guys, there's none of that. It's more, It's as much as it is a group thing, it's, it's so individualistic where you're like, like Jim said, you could just get in an unlucky loop and just keep getting hit. And you're like, well, this is fun. It's more of a game, but it's like, I don't, it's more mindless. There is a lot more thinking required for Among Us. So the highs are higher. Yeah, there's no relaxing with Among Us. No, no, there, there definitely isn't. So I don't know. I tend to go for more experiential. Is that a word? No. Now it is. So no, I, no, it I, isn't. I go for more experiential. You <sighs> can uh, Google it. I'm going to put it in Wiki tomorrow. <laughs> you better put Midgies in there then, bringing that back. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I don't know, but I do see what you're saying. Like, the Among Us experience can probably only be summed up in so many things. Like, are you griefing this game? Are you doing the objective? Are you the killer? Like, there, there's levels. There's really only, like, three ways to play. Yeah. Where, to be fair, with, like, 
even though you have that tiny bit of griefing in Fall Guys, the only real way to play is to play the game. You just so. play the game. And then at the end, like, you can watch. And there's not, like, a ton of different maps in the game either, even after mm -hmm. all this time, so. Well, that's why I said jokingly, but I said our buddy Lucas, like, he was always, he got number one or number two almost every, but he knew the maps. Like, I was like, how many times you play? He's like, I lost count a long time ago. He's played the game so much. Yeah. You could tell on maps, like, he knew exactly where to go. And I feel like when it gets to that point, you go, oh, well, then it could just get kind of boring. Like, if you just know, then you know it's just like one little slip up. You're like, okay, I just don't win this time. Right. Maybe that's why Burnout is the meme game, too. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I go with Among Us because it's experiential. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I do have a lot of fun with, uh, excuse me, with Fall Guys. I will say... I definitely want to make sure we get another stream in yep. with our viewers. Yep. But I also want to get in with Among Us. Okay. And we all have to keep getting Jim kicked off. God damn it. <laughs> every and I time. know it's going to happen, too. Every time. I know it's going to be that team up. <laughs> Jim, how many times did I get you kicked? Fuck, we're going to have to learn how to use goddamn Discord to do it right. <laughs> you can't just do it with text. It'll be even funnier when we're all talking to each other, too. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be... It'll be interesting. We'll, well use that. Never a, use uh, talk channel in our that's Discord. That's even on Xbox too. So if we get enough people on Xbox, oh yeah, true. So yeah, I don't know. We want to hear from you guys. What do you think is the best, or not even the best? Which is better to you, Among Us or Fall Guys? As I said, it's not compatible. It's not comparable when you say that uh, Fall Guys has actual gameplay mechanics, right. obviously. But which one do you have more fun with? Is a real question here. So, Chambers, uh, I'm glad we're hitting these hard hitting 2020 questions already. Hey, man, <laughs> it's a it's a two year gap. We're like the people from Lost. We've been lost. <laughs> yes, we have been lost. <laughs> I, I had nothing for that. Pooty tang. <laughs> Ten dollar tier people, make it happen. No, no, make Jim watch. I already have to watch the fucking room, so you give me goddamn pooty tang. <laughs> Don't you dare. Do booty tang. <laughs> you do booty tang. I refuse. <laughs> no, in my luck, someone's gonna make me watch fucking Fahrenheit no, all the way know through. What? Do hero. Do hero twice. <laughs> I've already uh, said it again. Maybe fifteen years will make a difference. <laughs> so Chambers, obviously the the beer of tonight, fat tire. The main beer of the night, yeah. Yeah. Super solid amber ale. You're not gonna go wrong with it. Yeah. So with that, we want to say Thank you all so much for watching. If you are, please make sure you hit the notification. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, hit the subscribe button. If you leave us a five-star rating, regardless of what you say, we will respond, even if you want to bash us. So with that, we want to say have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Cheers, guys.